This will be a short recording on the histology of the teeth. For a quick review, make sure you remember what types of tissue are found in the teeth and the periodontium. I will begin by reviewing the histology of bone tissue. Bone is a type of connective tissue, and like many other connective tissues, it is primarily extracellular matrix. The ECM of bone tissue is roughly two-thirds mineral, calcium phosphate crystals, and one-third organic, the protein collagen. Bone tissue is made by osteoblasts. These cells can be found in the mature tissue as osteocytes trapped between layers of extracellular matrix. At the center of each one of these osteons in compact bone is a haversion canal, and this is where you would find a lot of blood vessels providing the cells with nutrients. This makes compact bone a highly vascular tissue. Spongy bone is even more vascular because all of the space between trabeculae is often filled with red bone marrow. So if osteons have extracellular matrix laid down in concentric layers, trabeculae are similar. They have layers of extracellular matrix, but they're not laid down in a concentric fashion. Instead, the pattern is more spiral. Remember this though, when it comes to the hard tissues of teeth, because of the density of this extracellular matrix, we can't just squish it out from every direction. We have to lay it down one layer at a time. This is an H&E stain of some bone tissue. It's pathological, so it won't exactly match what we would find in a healthy adult. But nevertheless, it shows us what spongy bone looks like under the microscope versus compact bone down over in this region. Keep in mind that in spongy bone, all of these red blobs that you see are the spaces between trabeculae. So this here would be red bone marrow, whereas the actual bone matrix and cells would be found in these lighter staining areas. This is another example of bone tissue under the microscope using a slightly different type of stain. But once again, we can see regions of compact bone here on the outer edges versus spongy bone here more towards the center. You'll notice there's no super distinct line where the compact bone ends and the spongy bone begins. Once again, that's because this is the same type of tissue, just in a slightly different shape. So the pattern of one area just blends into the next. This slide here is a reminder that we will frequently be looking at the histology of these tissues from sections taken from embryos. And embryonic tissues are often immature. So in a, an adult, the bones would have compact bone on the outer edges and spongy bone in the center. But you may not quite see that in a lot of the images of histology. And that's because immature bone may be unmineralized or just beginning to mineralize. And when we first make bone tissue, we make it as mostly spongy bone later the outer edges will become compact bone. So what you might see is a bunch of spongy bone or possibly even regions of scaffolding that haven't turned into bone tissue. For most of the parts of the maxilla and mandible, at least the parts that house teeth, that scaffolding would be dense connective tissue, like dense regular or dense irregular not really sure about the pattern of the collagen fibers, just that the extracellular matrix is much denser than an areolar connective tissue.
So let's compare bone tissue now with the hard tissues found in teeth. First, bone tissue is highly vascular, whereas the dental hard tissues are avascular. And so if there are cells associated with the dental hard tissues, they're not going to be found within the tissues so much as on the outer edges. Enamel doesn't have any cells. It's only extracellular matrix. It was made by cells at one time, but you're not going to see them in the tooth itself. But just like osteons or spongy bone, the extracellular matrix of enamel is made one layer at a time. And we're gonna be able to see those layers. Dentin is also made one layer at a time, but dentin remains in contact with the cells that produce it. Most of those cells, the odontoblasts, are found at the outer edge of the dentin in the pulp cavity, but those cells have extensions little processes that extend all the way through the dentin. Lastly, cementum is another dense tissue, but it's not as thick as enamel or dentin. And sometimes you can find cementocytes found within the cementum. Let's start with enamel. Enamel is made in enamel rods. These rods are laid down one little layer at a time, but each little rod represents the enamel made by a single cell. So you'd have to zoom in pretty closely to see these enamel rods. The extracellular matrix of these rods is mostly calcium phosphate crystals, making it very similar to the inorganic portion of bone tissue. But there are some proteins in here called amelogenins and enamelins. These are not collagen. And the significance of this, more so than their name, is that enamel is not a type of connective tissue. It's similar to the extracellular matrix of bone tissue. However, it's made by a type of epithelial cell. And one of the main differences that we see here is that Unlike bone tissue or dentin, we don't have collagen. We've got a different type of protein. Here's a slice through a tooth. I think this is a pretty cool image. We can see the layers of enamel that are made one day at a time. Those are the lines of Retzius that I've tried to highlight here in that red box. But again, this extracellular matrix is completely acellular. It's made one day at a time by cells that started down here, but made an enamel rod one day at a time, very slowly extending it out to this direction. But because these cells speed up and slow down, speed up and slow down, speed up and slow down, we wind up being able to see the layers of that enamel rod that they made every day. There's another shape that we have to consider in the enamel, and that's the hunter schrager bands that are running in the direction that I've tried to highlight here. What this means is that the enamel being produced by ameloblasts is made one little rod at a time, but these rods are not perfectly parallel to one another. And that means we're going to have increased strength. If all the rods were perfectly parallel, there would be a line at which you could split one rod away from another rod, similar to the way that you try and split wood by hitting it along the grain, not against the grain. The grains of enamel are slightly irregular and that increases the strength of the overall tissue. Next is the histology of dentin, which is similar to bone tissue in that it's mostly extracellular matrix. And because the cells that make dentin 
come from a type of connective tissue cell, we're going to see that the matrix of dentin is actually more similar to the extracellular matrix of bone tissue. It's roughly two-thirds calcium phosphate crystals and one-third collagen. Like enamel, dentin is made one layer at a time, and you should be able to see the lines here of each of the layers of dentin as it was produced. Unlike enamel, you can actually find the cells that made the dentin. They are called odontoblasts, and their nucleuses are here at the very outer edge of the dentin. But these cells have long extensions that run in this direction through the entire layer of dentin. Those are called odont odontoblastic processes. Lastly, I just want to point out that dentin is mineralized, but when it's first made, we call it pre-dentin, found here, because it's not mineralized yet. This will later harden up, though. Here's a fancy picture of where the odontoblastic processes would be. They're found within these spaces in the matrix of dentin called dentinal tubules. And we can talk about the dentin that's right around the tubules and the dentin between the tubules by discussing peritubular versus intertubular dentin. Some parts of dentin are grainy. This would be the part of dentin that's right underneath cementum. So if this is the cementum layer here, we're looking over here at some grainy dentin. We don't really know why it's grainy, it just is. I don't know of any clinical significance to this, other than the person who discovered it named it after himself. So thank you, Tomes, for giving us the name Tomes Granular Layer to memorize. Here's another cool image of, of enamel and dentin underneath the microscope. And we can see how these tissues are made. The odontoblasts started somewhere up here, but as they laid down dentin, they were pushed down in this direction. So down here is where you would actually find the odontoblasts. Along this arrow would be where their odontoblastic processes would be found. And that's fairly visible under this image here. Another takeaway lesson is that the dentin is thicker than the enamel. Underneath all of this is the soft tissues of the pulp, which are a type of loose connective tissue, mostly areolar connective tissue with regions of cells. The first region of cells are the odontoblasts, connected there to the dentin they made. There would then be a space where you can't see cells, and then a space where you can see cells called the cell-free and the cell-rich zones. And at the very center, you'd find a lot of fibroblasts making some extracellular matrix, mostly ground substance, that provides support for a whole bunch of blood vessels and nerve fibers. Next up is cementum. Cementum is similar to bone tissue but it's a little bit softer than dentin, only being about half calcium phosphate crystals and half collagen. Some parts of cementum have cells found within it, others do not. The parts that do we call cellular cementum, and those cells are called cementocytes. And you would find these in the apical portions of the roots the coronal portions, you would not see cementocytes, just extracellular matrix. Now, 
the collagen found within cementum blends into the collagen that we see as the periodontal ligament. So the periodontal ligament is made by fibroblasts. But because fibroblasts and cementoblasts both come from a mesenchymal stem cell, once again, we're going to see a blending of these tissues. There's not going to be a sharp line of where the cementum ends and the periodontal ligament begins. Similarly, the cementum and dentin both come from a type of mesenchymal stem cell. And so the end of the dentin and beginning of the cementum will also be a bit blurry, not nearly as distinct as the border between enamel and dentin. And once again, the significance of this is that enamel comes from an epithelial cell, a completely different type of tissue than all of these connective tissues that are dentin, cementum, periodontal ligament, and even bone tissue. So the periodontal ligament is composed primarily of collagen. It should not be mineralized, but we also found collagen in the cementum and in the dentin. There may be some cells trapped within the periodontal ligament called epithelial rests of malasse. These may or may not have clinical significance. We're not entirely sure yet, but we at least have some idea that we might need to remember that name possibly in the future. The collagen fibers of the PDL become the periosteum found within compact bone, excuse me, found around the compact bone. And some of those collagen fibers even extend into the compact bone, and we would call those Sharpie's fibers. This makes for a very strong attachment between bone, ligament, and the roots of teeth. <laughs>